So I got a taste of my own medicine this weekend. And it was humbling. And I wish I would have realized it before it was too late. So I was in Cartersville and I was working the youth explosion and I had a great time doing it, by the way, a great turnout from the community. Happy to see that we have youth who are interested in learning, you know, learning on their on their personal time, whether it was their choice or their parents choice. Happy to have a great crowd out there. But more importantly, happy that we had um, adults who were willing to devote their time and 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 uh, resources into these youth because we don't have to. But it, it, it was great, man. Let me tell you, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the team that I worked with. We had a great time. And I enjoyed the kids that I worked with or the young people that I worked with. Let me not call them kids. But, man, let me tell you, trying to relate to the young men was, te- was a terrible. Like, they just wouldn't talk. It's like, bro, why are you even here? And then you ask them a direct question. They just look at you. Yeah, I'm good. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not good. How can I make you? T- I, I, I've been in your shoes. How can I get you there? And then I asked a friend who works with younger people than I do on a much more regular basis. And I was like, bro, I'm not used to not being able to relate to, to, to young people like this. He's like, bro, they don't know you. You got to prove yourself to them. And I think that's the difference between the way I was raised and the way that, not even the way I was raised, the the society that I grew up in and the society that we live in. Adults have to prove themselves to young people. Like, why should I trust you? Why should I take you seriously? What have you done and what can you do for me? And as the adult, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you got some nerve, but I wish I could just put the gloves on right now. And yeah, but, but I remember how I was when I was 16, 17. I'm like, man, y'all got these people coming here trying to tell me how I can be successful. What have they done? Who are they to tell me how to live my life? Oh, man, I became that person. The person who thought because they walked in the room, it was okay. The person who thought that because I'm speaking, people are going to listen. Let me tell you, it was a taste of my own medicine. And I didn't like it. Not at the moment, but now that I've had time to sit back on, I go, man, I wish I would have done this differently. Man, I wish I would have just hopped in a little group with them and talked to them and said, hey, man, what's happening? Let's talk. Let, Let Help me meet you where you are. Because I talk so often about leaders uh, having the responsibility of meeting those that they lead at their level and not expecting everybody to be at the leader's level. And I feel victim to the very behavior that I criticize. Players mess up, man. Leaders mess up. But I wanted to bring it here to let y'all know that for one, it happened. And two, I'm happy it happened because I've been doing a lot of podcast talking, but not a lot of stuff in the field, you know, and even the some of the stuff that I've been doing in the field, I've been doing it, you know, uh, with different platforms that gave me uh, instant credibility just by showing up. And and in this situation, I, I didn't have that. And that's usually the way I like to work. Like, I don't want the instant credibility when I show up. I want to get in there and I want to earn it. And then I sat back and I was like being, I was being lazy. I was being a lazy leader. I was being a lazy leader. And don't get me wrong. We got some stuff accomplished, but I was a lazy leader. And, you know, I've got to do better. I've got to do better, man. 